Hey, good lord YouTube, what's going on? It's Mike here, this is my channel, Solid State Alchemy. I'm in my basement and, you know, we're just hanging out here in the underbelly of the YouTube algorithm, you know, doing what we do, talking about uh, computers and whatnot. So the most recent video that I've released talked about this case here. Um, this is the Montec Flyer case. And this is just a PC that I built um, last year, actually. Um, I didn't actually, <laughs> I built this PC and never really got around to like getting serious about selling it. Um, I built, this is rare for me, I built this out of like 100% new or at retailer purchased parts. Typically, I go out, you know, and I kind of do the Tech Yes City thing where I, um, you know, scrounge through uh, Craigslist, Facebook Market, Mercari, wherever, eBay if I have to. I don't really like to use eBay uh, to procure parts um, to get um, parts that I can kind of, you know, put together in a coherent system that um, I can then resale for just a little bit of markup, just something, you know, it's really more of a hobby. But anyway, I built this computer last year, in the summer of last year, in the dark days of the PSU um, drought. I don't know if anybody remembers the, the power supply unit drought of 20, uh, the great power supply unit drought of 2020. It was uh, slightly overshadowed by a global pandemic, um, but it was a thing. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, I built this as just an absolute budget, budget based rig. You know, how how cheap could I get brand new retail parts and put them together in a, in a PC that would actually play, at least play like esports titles, you know, CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, Dota 2, League of Legends, um, Fortnite, he plays Fortnite, you know, um, and it does all of those uh, fairly well. Let's talk about the specs of the build, right? So as mentioned previously, we've got the Montec Flyer, that case clocked in at just under 50 bucks. Um, we have a Zotac Gaming GeForce GTX 1650 Super with the GDDR6 memory. Underneath this very tiny stock Intel heatsink is an I Core i3 9100F. It's sitting on a, a Gigabyte B360M DSH, DS3H. Motherboard, micro ATX motherboard, um, you know, nothing special. I, there's no VRM heat sinks on it, you know, it's just like very, very bare minimum spec. Um, it's got a one terabyte hard drive. Um, it does, for a little bit of future proofing, or a little bit, not future proofing, but a little bit of like upgradability um, so that it could handle like more robust parts in the future, it does have an EVGA 600BQ. Um, so it does have a little bit of, you know, uh, power headroom, you could easily upgrade that um, graphics card to a GTX 1660 or a 2060 Super, um, 6060 Ti or 2060 Super and, and have enough power to, to run it, well, no issues. It would also, you know, if you wanted to go back a uh, generation but also get more power, it, it'll run, you know, like a GTX 1070 or 1070, 1070 Ti fairly easily. And it's got eight gigabyte of you know green stick kind of RAM. I don't even remember what brand this is. Let me pull one of these out here. Uh, eight gigabyte of no name black PCB RAM. Uh, if memory serves, this is oh yeah, this is G scale G scale budget. It's just very 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 tiny little like holographic. Um, sticker on there that says G Skill. So this is the G Skill budget RAM. This is 2400 DDR4 2400 RAM, um, which is fine considering that 2400 megahertz is the get back in there guy. I'll re-see him in a minute. He's being ornery. Um, 2400 megahertz is the highest you can get RAM to go on the B300 um, motherboards, I think, or 2666 maybe, and yeah, it, there's not a whole lot in it between 2400 and 2666 if that is the, the max clock. So yeah, this is a, an extremely low power, low uh, power consumption, 
build, um, but it's it should be very reliable. It should do you know all the things computers typically do as far as like you know off home office computing, no issues, and it can play some games for sure. Yeah, it'll totally play esports games. It'll play older games with no issues. Um, the sixteen fifty is supported by. Uh, NVIDIA's uh, a lot of their encoder software so if you want to like, use it for video encoding or use it for photo editing um, now video video rendering I should say and you know it can accelerate a lot of processes um, even though the uh, Intel GPU or CPU doesn't have an integrated graphics chip there so I put that computer together in the late summer of 2020 and this total build right here cost me right around in the neighborhood of four hundred and sixty dollars um, I paid a hundred and seventy five dollars for the graphics card that was the most expensive part of the computer it usually is um, the 9100 F retailed at the time for about seventy five bucks um, the B360 motherboard was um, it retailed at the time for $59.99. I got it as an open box from uh, Micro Center for like $44. So that was a pretty good deal. That's not typical, but it's still like, you know, uh, only $10 off of what the um, retail price was at the time. The Montec case was just under 50 bucks. The power supply was, even though we were in the power supply drought, I managed to find a, a open box, new open box again uh, for 50 bucks. And the hard drive, you can easily, it's easy to find hard drives on eBay. I do use eBay for hard drives because there's just so much volume that they, they fall in price. I was able to find a new in-package, one terabyte Western Digital hard drive for $20. Um, but good Lord, um, I don't know what is happening now uh, with with component prices so I priced this exact same computer out on PC part picker first that's you know um, that is an imperfect way to find out how much things cost and, I'll, and we'll talk about it a little in a, a little bit here um, more farther into the video about what the drawbacks are between PC part picker but uh, I'm gonna you know I'll put it up on the screen here uh, some screen capture but uh, the PC part picker spit out prices of $130, and this is all like plus shipping or plus applicable tax. $130 for the uh, Core i3 9100F. Um, the RAM is about the same. The Patriot Viper Elite is roughly equivalent to this RAM uh, for $40. Uh, Seagate Barracuda 1 terabyte for $40. That is a fairly typical retail price. You could probably get that drive cheaper on eBay, but that's a not that's neither here nor there. But this is what's driving me crazy. New from Amazon, this graphics card, this exact same graphics card, is $357.89. We're literally six months away, six months from when I bought that last year. And that price is repeated um, on Newegg. Let me see if I can uh, bring up the, the Newegg stuff here. Uh, so... Yeah, Newegg had a price of $359. Yeah, I'll put that up on the screen. $359 for a Zotac G4 1650 Super Twin Fan, 4 gigabyte GDDR6. Um, that is crazy town. So the PC part picker price, <laughs> that's fun to say, but also kind of annoying for this build, not even um, including uh, prices for the case or for the motherboard, PC Part Picker spat out a price of $630 for this computer. And I built this computer for $460 last summer. Um, so just to recreate a cheap computer from six months ago now costs 50% more basically because this is not even counting the price for the that $630 figure is missing 50 bucks for the case and about 70 
uh, dollars or more for the motherboard. So you think that's another $120. So we're talking about $850, $850 American Samoans for what was six months ago a $460 bill. Now, I will say, I did my own math, um, and, and this is why, let's talk about PC Part Picker. Not always the best place to go and find prices or comparable prices for your hardware parts. Let me get a little sip of this here. Because I went and I did my own, you know, I went and opened Google tabs on basically each one of these parts individually and I searched around and tried to find a cheaper price or the cheapest price I could find and I was able to recreate this PC for $605. I was able to find a used, a used version, I remember I bought this new for $170, a used version of this card or uh, a used seller of this card for $230 on eBay. And that's going to be plus tax, plus any applicable shipping or whatnot, right? Um, the power supply has gone up about 15 bucks. The uh, 9100F is about $110, about the cheapest. If you want to buy it immediately, right? If you want to buy it now, 110 But, you know, I've seen, um, uh, let's talk about eBay and there, you know, they have a functionality where you can search sold listings. And I'll start putting some of these up on the screen here. But sold listings for um, for the 9100F that are in just like kind of just nuts categories uh, for the um, it doesn't look like my video capture went through here, but um, nuts categories for these these parts right um, seeing people pay like hundred and thirty dollars for this this CPU P people paying three hundred plus two hundred seventy dollars for the GPU um, and here is why right I think it, well there's let's talk about the why because that's there's there's just you know no reason to make this video unless we're going to, you know, discuss some other things. So that I think, I think personally, there's three things that are, you know, causing this like ridiculous um, escalation or inflation in computer parts, right? So the first is the 800-pound gorilla in the room. It's the pandemic. People are at home. They need computers to conduct work from home um, in more depth than maybe a laptop can allow even though it's hard to find good laptops right now too. Um, also, there's, so there's insane demand and then there's scarcity, which that's like a, you know, self-licking ice cream cone. The insane demand is driving the scarcity, but then you have like scarcity, you know, the, the people who perpetuate it because they are out there buying parts and in order to flip them and sell them for more money, right? Um, for no other, you know, they, they're just trying to make a buck by doing nothing else than selling something somebody else wants, you know, at a higher, or buying something that's in demand and then turning right around and selling it, which I personally hate, right? You know, they're, they're just basically functioning as a, a store shelf with none of the, uh, none of the conveniences that coming that come with you know being on a store shelf you know, they didn't add any value to the product like going out and buying a thing and then turning around and selling it for more doesn't add any value to the product it's still the exact same product it's still new in packaging right and as a consumer i've lost the convenience of paying with a credit card or um you know, going whenever the store is open as opposed to whenever this uh, Craigslist seller, Craigslist scalper, let's call them what they are, scalper is available, right? Or Facebook market scalper, whenever is good for their um, schedule, you know, uh, maybe I work and I just need to go when the store's open, you know, after I get off of work and they're, maybe they're just not available at that time. So that's, you know, they so they rob you of convenience and then they charge you more for the for no added um, no added benefit, right? There's there's no value add 
to a scalper transaction. That's why I really, and I'm going to harp on that for a second, like don't buy things from scalpers. Make them hold that product and sell it back at a reasonable price. But the problem is people need this stuff, right? In some instances, like nobody really needs a 6900 XT unless, I mean, I guess there's maybe some 3D modeler or you know something, some some super high-end compute use case for this. In which case, just you know, shell the money out and get uh, a Radeon Pro or a Quadro. But anyway, so the pandemic, overwhelming demand, scalpers, uh, and then so the pandemic has is a double-edged sword, right? So it's driven demand, but it's also curbed supply. Uh, China is a huge manufacturer, China and Taiwan are huge manufacturing bases for computer parts and they have had to uh, definitely, you know, uh, limit the number of people that they could have in their manufacturing facilities and how much, and that's limited how much product that they could produce. But there is, you know, so that's a couple of different reasons for why we're seeing such inflated prices, but there's a, there's a new, new for January at least, um, contributing factor and that is cryptocurrency mining is back it's back it's like Baltimore he's back um, yeah so we're back to 2017 basically when you couldn't buy a GPU that had more than 8 gig of VRAM for love or money basically um, so Ethereum is up like 30 percent this month in the first two weeks of 2021 and it's up against Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin is down, Ethereum is up. That means uh, GPU mining for Ethereum makes sense, temporarily at least. Now there's some stuff on the horizon that's probably going to make that go away in like six months. But for but and maybe that those are those are those are conjecture. You know, six months, nine months. It could be six to nine months. It could be longer. It may not have as big an impact as some people think because there could be mitigating factors. There's some like you know new introduction new rule into the algorithm they're gonna to make to where you can't get as much ethereum when you unlock a block as you used to be able to it's like a bonus they call it a mining bonus so the mining bonuses may go down considerably when that update to the ethereum mining chain is completed but in the intervening six to nine to twelve months Miners are going to try to make some hay, right? They're going to they're going to try to cash in on this upswing in Ethereum, as long as it holds, right? So they are if it's got more than six gigabytes of VRAM, and it's a fairly modern GPU, they're buying it. eBay is insane right now. RX 580s are going for. Their MSRP from four years ago, right? Like $230, $250, $270 for an RX 580. $336 for a Zotac Twin Fan GTX 1650 Super. It's only got four gigabyte of VRAM. It's not a mining powerhouse. But because none of the more expensive options are available and people just need something, right? Now they've turned down market and they're snapping up all that supply. The upper market is compromised because of Ethereum and supply constraints. People need something to build a computer with, so they go downstream and they start to cannibalize that supply, and this is where we're at, right? So between the pandemic, between uh, limited supply and crazy demand, and, well, the pandemic drove those two things, and now compounding on that, the Bitcoin mining craze is back for Ethereum. Man, it's t it's dark times. It's t troubling times in the kingdom. If you want to build a computer, uh, just no bueno. You know what I'm saying? Man, ten days. Um, so <laughs> that's terrible Spanish. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about like my experience, like building this last year. This was a I felt like this was a great value gaming rig in the summer of 2020. A time that I thought was really hard to build a computer in. I had no idea what was in store for the winter of 2021. Um, 
or yeah, winter into spring, right? This is this is crazy town. We're in some like crazy times as far as like just prices, availability. People are buying whatever is available at almost any price. Yeah, if you check the the sold listings on eBay for these components, these you know it, they're laughable what people are selling or are paying. You know, it's not the fact that people are selling it for the prices. I mean, you sell it. If you're a seller, you sell for what you can get. It's the fact that people are paying it in droves. Is is it blows my mind? Yeah. So on that bombshell, you know, uh, I'm Mike. Again, this is my channel, Solid State Alchemy. I'm in my basement. We're down here in the underbelly of the YouTube algorithm, talking about you know, tech and whatnot, and I just wanted to share my experience, you know, uh, I, I really enjoyed building this computer at the time, and now I look at it and kind of shake my head. Hey, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, you know, uh, just give me a thumbs up, drop a comment, I like to interact with my viewers, um, yeah, what's, uh, what's, what's the brick and mortar, like, um, experience for PC parts where you're at, uh, just, one last parting thought, like, you know, my my micro center that's about 45 minutes away doesn't have anything more powerful than a GT1030 in stock right now. All right, guys, I'm out.